way and showing us some zany things, to say the least. So Lions uh, have been looking at their Kaboom versus Cloud9 game here. And Syndra first ban against Tin Owns. He actually looked pretty solid in the laning phase, and Kaboom as a team, in terms of mechanics and in terms of laning phase, I know you talked about it, Riff, as well, they actually look pretty solid. Yep. I mean, they are good laners here. They have the ability to surprise the Lions, and Kaboom is a team going into these games with no pressure at all because they're just here to show how good they are. They're here to represent Brazil and learn as much as possible and try and surprise a team like Alliance, maybe like Cloud9. And speaking with those working closely with Kaboom, you know, they said their first game, they expected it to be a bit one-sided. Cloud9, they were a little bit upset that that went the way it did. Oh, yeah. Now against Alliance, they have seen Alliance falter and I'm sure they want to go right for the neck if they see that weakness. Yeah, both of these teams are 0-2 in the group, so a win here is vital for Absolutely everyone. Alliance themselves coming into this as one of the favorites in the group. They have right. all performed, all oh. turned up, and the question is, can they be put on tilt? I mean, there's a couple of pressures. There was always question marks over Shook and Tabs when it came into big, questionable situations, and right now, we see Shook getting Lee Sin. That's a big yeah. champion for him here. We'll see if he can deliver. And actually, at Champion, we have seen Kaboom in the past ban a lot because they don't want to play against this early pressure you can do, or you can make on Lee Sin. Shook being able to get it. It's going to be important for him and his confidence, but when you talk with Alliance, they always say, we don't tilt. Especially Shook as a jungle, they say, you know what? He plays like he does at scrims, he's learned it, he doesn't get affected by any bad plays, so he's Flash Cocoon versus Cloud9. Probably not in his mind anymore, and I love the fact we get Thresh and Rumbo, who's been winning so many games and who is so damn strong in this mid-game here. Kaboom, already looking to win the mid-game fights and take the game. That mid-game fight indeed, and I love the fact that they always hover. They hover for fun, they hover for the crowd, they know just to release a little stress here in Champion Select because a lot of things can get just tight here. You kind of get a little stressed out, it's good to keep a clear mind. We'll see that Rumble and Thresh absolutely being locked in. So now, the 3-4 pick, the answer here, or I should say 4-5 pick, coming in from Alliance. We shouldn't forget, of course, that Alliance did have that 7-0 lead, a 5k gold advantage yeah. over Najin White Shield. They had a big lead in the early game. It worked so well for them. What let them down a little bit was their vision. They didn't yes, keep on pushing either. Now that we're going to see potentially Aurelia once again for Wicked, it is a comfort champion, but it just happens to be a champion that is fitting the meta right now. It is working quite well for the teams that have been picking it. Rumble, on the other hand, also had magnificent statistics. <laughs> yeah. Seven wins, one <laughs> loss so far. Four and zero yesterday here in Singapore. And has only had two bans against them. The last one being in the previous matchup, of course. So one of their tactics we see, or we're going to start to see more and more, is people picking Aurelia into Rumble. Simply because Rumble is great when he's with his team in the mid to late game and he can team fight. He's not so great in these one on ones against something like an Aurelia who can actually kill him. This means Kaboom has to send someone else up to defend against Wicked, and suddenly you have this one on one where Aurelia should be in the advantage, and you're gonna have a four versus four elsewhere on the map where Rumble won't really get to shine in these big, big team fights. So let's see what Wicked can actually do on his. Uh, Beloved Aurelia pick. And team fighting is something that Kaboom loves to do. They are aggressive. Danagorn wears that as his middle name. And you can see with the fact that they want Jinx all the time, it gets banned against Minerva. The resets are what they want. They want to be in these fights. Kha'Zix, however, played by Danagorn, allows him to be aggressive. Okay. And he did bring that out at the International Wild Card. I'm happy he goes back to Lucian here. I actually like his performance against yeah, Cloud9 on it. Yep. Like, solid laning phase. You have a lot of big play potential and a lot of skirmish potential. And once again, Make game power here from Kaboom coming right. in. You have the Rumble, oh. you have the Lucian. We're going to have to see what Tin Owens wants to play in the mid lane here. We have seen him play Ari before. Would actually work great into the comp they have at the moment. Kazix, one of the highest picked champions here at the World Championships. Once again for Danagorn, it's one of his most impressive champions. It's the one he's had the most victories on, that's for sure. So we'll see how that works out for him. Comfort picks all round so far for both teams, honestly. And of course, Tam's getting his hands on that Tristana. It seems that Nif, he goes for this Nami. Would be a comfort pick. Kassadin is available. Ooh. Didn't go well in the last matchup, but this time around, maybe Froggen's hands feels confident, but Fizz, Fizz was banned against the Lions yes. in the first game of the day. And it's been a champion Froggen has spammed in Korean solo right. queue, and it's a champion a lot of the players respect. Froggen's ability on, when you talk with him about Alliance, they're always like, Froggen, he can carry on Fizz here. And Alliance, they want to have Froggen on these carry champions, where again, give him a kill early on. Shook loves to early gank mid lane. 
get a kill onto Froggen and let him take control of the game. Let him just destroy the enemy team. Fist is a great pick. You snowball into late game. You scale really well. You can one on one. You can also team fight really well on the Fist. Alliance right now is setting up for 1 3 1. You have Tristana sitting in the mid lane, static shift, Janna there for disengage. Then you have the Lee Sin who can roam between the lanes, and of course, Wicked and Froggen are going to be so, so strong in one on ones. I was just going to say, I'd love to see an Orianna, but with the Fizz pick, we probably won't. That's a really tough lane. And looking at the team yes. as well, it's going to be hard to hit a shockwave on any of these guys as they're hopping in, out, jumping left and right. That's a risky pickup, but it is something that Tin Owens likes to play. So Kabumi is putting full focus on five versus five team fights yep. on their side yep. here. But Alliance, if it's going to fit their style, they're never really going to be grouping up in a five versus five team fight. They can just split up the map constantly, focus on the split pushing, because look at Kabumi's side here. Who's going to stop Aurelia? Who's going to stop Fizz? Nobody. They're going to yeah. have to group as a unit, push down, force Alliance to come back and defend their towers or objectives, and then take the five versus five. It's going to be interesting to see whether Alliance decide to turn some aggression in this game, because they've been fairly passive. Despite the great start they had, they were finding picks, of course, against Najin White Shield earlier on today. They went back to that passive mode, which, of course, they played against Cloud9 yesterday. You'd feel against Kaboom. This is the chance where they can show really the world we can be an aggressive team, we can go for it. The fact that Fizz is picked in there, yeah. along with Elise in you expect yeah. a lot of focus possibly on that mid lane for Shook. We often see it again, Froggen and Shook, great friends. They were the original members of the super team as well. They it's wanted to play together, everything. exactly. Yeah. I expect to see Shook in this mid lane a lot. It's going to be crazy. We have to consider if Alliance coming in here as the super team. This is what they built for. Will they continue to go winless in the group? Remember, we'll be checking back throughout the game to see how the poll shifts. Keep voting on Twitter by sending either hashtag ALLWIN or KBMWIN to at LOLE Sports. It's about to get in game now for another one on the Rift. This one's going to be Alliance versus Kaboom. Alliance looking to pick up a win so they do not go winless within their group. And they are on to the Rift. It's going to be Alliance on blue and Kaboom on the red side. Yeah, one of these teams will be leaving the halfway stage winless. Who will it be? Alliance or Kaboom? Representing the Brazilian international wildcard team. Qualified, of course, over in Pax. They were unusual qualifier. Nobody expected it. They were technically the third seed in their region, right. but they came up trumps when it counted to make it through to that final. Of course, beating Pex over in Pax to the North American. Pex Pax is easy to uh, mix up. <laughs> Absolutely. But Alliance, they are the number one seed representing Europe and currently yet to get a win on the board, That's which crazy. is crazy caught so many people off guard, but it is a tough group, no doubt about it. It is, and in this game here, Alliance, they need to be careful because Kaboom's mid to late game comp here is super, super strong, and if Kaboom managed to do well in the laning phase, take the lead, they can start taking objectives and Alliance won't be able to fight against them, and suddenly they can fall too far behind and Kaboom can take can take the game. So Alliance needs to be careful in these lanes here. It's going to be a lot about Shook, what he can do. You can gank top lane, Aurelia, Max E. You get the longest on duration, easy setup for Lee Sin. And of course, this mid lane, Orianna has no jumps. And she's actually not running any defensive summoners like we have seen before when it's Orianna against Fizz and you're expecting a lot of action in the mid lane. Well, not a lot of action in the early game is to get the buddy wards out. All wards pretty much holding hands here for the safety. Boom stays looking for the 2v2 as well. He just saw Froggen back off there. He's now got four health pots stacked up. So he went back and stacked himself up those extra pots. So expecting a bit of a rough time early on against yeah. Tinones in that mid lane. It is Oriana, his favorite champion. So you'd expect him to be pretty strong on it in the early phases. Of course, we do yeah. see red buff start by Shug. Not really leased out too heavily by Alliance. While a lot of support for Danagorn on that blue buff. Yeah, that could be a problem for Kaboom down this bottom lane. The fact they're going to lose the early push for level two. And would actually mean Taps and Nif should be able to push the lane up and into the tower here in this bottom lane and take control of the bottom side of the map. And mid lane, of course, again, Tinones, he's just going to poke Froggen every single time he gets the chance. Flash, of course, is a defensive summoner, but they got a second one. And wow, actually, Kaboom coming straight down and starting the push here. Get, oh, should also get the early level too. Also so just got a glimpse that in that top lane. Wicked <laughs> tried to go aggressive early on. The level one yeah. aggression from Aurelia. It can work out, but let turned it around and answered it very well and forced Wicked back. No summoners blown just yet for this bottom side. You can see Tin owns in the mid lane. Playful tricks are coming in. Definitely taking that shield and ball movement. You can easily stop that dot damage and a lot of pressure. And Tin owns knows how to play this one. 
And what we often see in this matchup between Fizz and Orianna is they're actually fairly even in CS in the start because Fizz has the flask, has a lot of health potions. But once Orianna managed to poke enough and get Fizz to use all the sustain he has, then he starts falling back and has uh, falling behind. Top lane though, gang onto Lep. Uh oh, Lep in trouble here. He does have his flash up very low. He's trying to hold it for the last second. Scrap shield goes on and he blows the flash and goes down. Had to consider the red buff as well there. Would have taken him out past the flash. Yeah, I'm not sure what he was actually waiting for here. After the dash from Shook, he could have just tried and flash away on the tower. Right. Danagorn was moving to the top lane, trying to come for a counter gank. In the end, though, you get a kill for Alliance now, and you force the flash. Oh, double flash in the mid lane as well. Froggen pushes Tin Owens away. Meanwhile, of course, his jungler was coming around back down the bottom lane. Tabs pulled in, has the rocket jump out. The exhaust was used out there. Nif still keeping the pressure on. Minerva was taken pretty low from that uh, ignite Sorry, of Nif. These lanes are absolutely trading early on. A lot of action here. Kaboom down this bottom lane again. Dance with the hook. Start the fight here. They want to be aggressive all the time. Up in this top lane, Wicked still has flash ready, and Danagorn is once again looking towards this top lane. He always wants to gank for Lep. Lep pretty much forced to push that lane with his flame spitter. Uh -oh. Already taking control of Shook from lane oh, to lane. Shit. Being very methodical and omnipresent right now in the beginning of this game, getting every use he can out of the buffs he's holding. This is the Shook oh. we were expecting to see, the Shook that, as of yet, hasn't really appeared in this tournament. Now that he is on lead yeah. then, he's of course one of the few Europeans that do very well on that champion. We'll see how he delivers. This is absolutely his time to shine. Tabs in this bottom lane. Had to burn that heal early on as well as Nip's Ignite, so there is still the flash and heal available for Minerva, so and get out of that sticky situation. But once again, we see Tams and Nip putting pressure, pushing them into the tower. Yeah, again, they did actually lose the fight for level two, even though they didn't actually really unleash the red buff and Kaboom did. But that's one of the powers of Lucian coming down and just instantly push the lane. And also because Minerva and Dance, they like to play aggressive in the lane. And we see Tinodes warding bot, but it's shook. Mobility boots top already. Back to make plays, back to take that flash down from Lep into consideration. And really using the early power of Lee Sin here. He is going to be stronger than the Karthix and he wants to keep ganking. Snowball his lanes. Gonna walk in, flame spits are running. Wicked is wicked wants to take the damage and get the him. Yeah, he's trying to bait him in, trying to keep that blade surge going, trying to show that he's using it. There's the kick, gonna land on towards him, but I think that might be safe on this one. You can see he's gonna try and get away. They're gonna have to tower dive, and they will go for it. They have enough damage. Wicked taking too many tower hits. He just about gets away. Shook will be able to walk off as well. And again, the gank on the top lane is successful. And Danagorn is not there. I mean, he keeps walking up to the top lane when Shook is not there, and then he walks back to his jungle to farm, and Shook finds an opening in the top lane. If he had been there for the counter game this time around, easy pick up here for him. He could have killed Wicked, probably also killed Shook, but obviously that's easy for us to say because we can see the entire map. Good in and out coming from that left, being hit pretty good. Still has the equalizer, but it is going to be quite diminished. Already Wicked at level 6, left still 5, so there's going to be a lot of harass coming in that top lane. Froggen and 10 Owens hitting 6 at the same time here. No chum the waters there, but that is the in and the out. Fizz always playing the back and the forth in this matchup versus Orianna. It's quite a, just makes you want to pull your hair out. Six minutes, actually almost seven on the clock. Oh, oh wow, going for the dive on this one. Jump you can play little Trickster out, and that is the wow. utility and damage that they bring. I said it was going to be a hard matchup because they're all just going to be jumping around. Yeah, this is a very early dive from Alliance, but they want to get the kills on the solo lane as Froggen now did manage to get the kill. Should picked it up, but he can now go back to base, buy his items, don't have to care about losing any CS because they just managed to kill Tino anyway. Oh, oh no, Wicked enough. feeling confident now. He's already burnt everything from left. And now he's just pumping out of the lane. Equalizer turned around. I think almost in frustration from the left there as he overheats. And Wicked will just back away. He's building up towards that frenzy force. He's confident in that lane match now. Yeah, but that was a great turnaround here by left. There was no... Or Wicked couldn't dash away from it. He actually had to flash to get out of the ulti from left. So nice uh, play here. Force in the best. Let's see if Danagorn can actually use this opportunity. No flash on Wicked, mm. no flash on Frog in this mid lane, just for a few seconds, that's going to be hard to punish. So the blue buff trying to be used to whittle away Frog in this mid lane so he doesn't have the aggression to just go under the turret once again and out with Playful Trickster. 
Danagorn really being shut down by Shook here. He's been all over the map and has not been able to apply from Danagorn's side the pressure he wants from Kha'Zix. Trouble is brewing in that mid lane. Froggen yeah. out farming. Tin owns considerably considering it is an Orianna Fizz match up on the first six levels. Now just hitting level seven. Bottom lane also starting to put some pressure down and forcing them away. We did just see Minerva's gone back, get himself that BF sword. There's the blue buff for Froggen. That's only going to spell yet more trouble, I feel, on this mid laner on oh, Tino. Danagorn getting this red buff needs to get involved in these ganks that are happening. He's trying, but he's just a little too late to the party. This time around, Shook spotted by the ward, and he's going to go face to face with Danagorn. Oh, the dodge out. Very nicely done there. Will he be able to get himself in? Oh, a oh. little too bit uh, quick of a kick there before the resonating strike comes in, so he can't finish the damage in the end. He kicks Janagorn away, but still, Danagorn, he just came out. Now he's forced to go back again, creating zero pressure for the team. 201 Shook, really putting his foot down. Still staying towards the top lane, see if he can catch left in an aggressive state. As you see, Tin Owens, he does not want to get close to Froggen right now. So uh, we just again see Shook using this list in early on to win the fights against Danagorn, to gank the lanes constantly. And Danagorn, Danagorn can only come in for counter gank. He can't go face to face with Shook at this right. point here. He needs more time. He's going to outscale him, but that's going to be, I mean, 10 minutes, 15 minutes in the future, which might not be enough for Kaboom because the lines at the moment are just snowballing these solo lanes. Oh, Wicked just dashing in, getting a quick basic attack onto Leopard, going straight out before Leopard can turn it around. Danagorn again is close by. We'll see if he decides to go there. Good calling coming out here. A lot of damage on Nith there. That's going to force him low on this turret. There's a big minion wave as well for Kaboom, but they've got no support because Danagorn's trying to help out the top lane. Well, for now, he's actually just sitting back to farm because the laners have been able to stay alive for the last few minutes. He is head in farm compared to Shook. Let's see what happens around this mid lane. Danagon is here as well. Ultimate again. They're looking to get a refresh on that blue buff from Dan Owens. A nice double shockwave to bring in Froggen and Shook, and it will deter them a little bit from re-engaging. And that one, Glep very low in the top lane as he overheats. He's trying not to get pushed in. The second they showed in that mid lane, Wicked went aggressive in the top onto left. You can see yeah. he burned his equalizer and his flash. Danagorn finds Shook, kicks him in there. He's got the support of Froggen, flashes straight out of it, tries to force him away. Playful Tricks is not going to find him. The Ignite will Ooh. not get him. Calculator staying alive. About heals himself up. Just managed to flash out here once again, though. Every time we see the two junglers meet each other, Shook has the advantage, getting all the damage on Danagorn and forcing him back to base back into his own jungle. And Alliance continuously looking to push this. Shook, Sightstone immediately with those boots. Been putting down some deep wards as well. And we just look at the lanes. What damage has this done? The discrepancy, gigantic towards that top lane. Minerva doing what he can in the bottom though to keep the pressure up. Yeah, the way back in the game here for Kaboom is not to keep going with these solo laners for the entire game long because they're falling further and further behind. Aurelia's gonna be stronger and stronger and so Goes, uh, same goes for Fizz in these one-on-ones here. Kaboom, they have to try and force objectives. Rumble has haunting guys and ulti up soon. They could go potentially for a dragon here and see if Alliance want to try and contest it and then use the Rumble ult to win the fight. Tap's making sure he doesn't get tagged up there. The calling comes through once again, gets interrupted nicely by Nip for that Howling Gale. This time around, Danagorn was nearby, but you can see there's a ward that actually spotted him in and around that blue buff area. I think it's just timed out, but they knew and he was heading, which is why they're playing a little bit cautiously this time around. Good pressure from Kaboom. They may just take the first tower of the game here. Minerva would love to get that. Maybe have oh, a lane oh, to farm oh. for a little bit. Up towards the top lane once again. This is definitely a diveable thing. Transcendent Blades coming out oh. from Wicked. They kick him up against the wall. And they are going to take down Lep once again. It is so hard. I mean, he, the guy is almost standing at his tower the entire game long, and yet Shook can just walk up, dive onto him. They're gonna need some wards if they want to spot the dive, so Danagon can move up and try and counter gank it. Otherwise, abandon the lane. You're losing it. You keep giving up kills now. Yeah. Try and go for an objective. Go down towards. Oh, they're gonna go Danagon. Again. They're going for Danagon now. They can't get too close. They may be able to land the Sonic Wave. No, not quite. Nice to go for a blind swing and a miss. But they're going to get forced away here. In comes Lep. Can he come around? A good equalizer may be enough if they can catch it down there. It does separate them, but it is going to be a quick back off. Look at this, though. In comes Froggen sneaking in on the side. Always going to back away. Wicked really is keeping Lep on his toes. 
constantly looking for these fights here because they know they are so strong. Teleport was used by Lip up in this top lane as well. Danagon staying around. And Dance wants to join in as well. After they got this bot lane tower, Kaboom can look to now switch their dual lane, maybe up to the top side and try and go for another tower. Wicked been a bit more vocal lately in the fact that he, as he does well, makes the calls for the team. Feels a lot more confident, and the team themselves feel more confident going throughout the game. So getting him early, or getting him going early, rather, is a plus for everybody on the map. So far, the pressure has been to the top side. And like you said, Danagorn to be pressuring for Minerva, pressure for the mid lane. Get those guys. I actually like the Kaboom idea here of sending Minerva to this mid lane together with Tinones because Fist doesn't have a lot of safe wave clear. He might he has to jump into the minions mm -hmm. and he will take a lot of damage if he do if he does so, which means Kaboom can actually push down this mid lane, get some damage on the oh. tower. Seems though Froggen is not gonna be interested in staying and defending. He wants more action in top lane. Well the ward will spot him, but he can't stick around, buddy. If there's a fish coming up out of water, you need to run the hell away. <laughs> Currently though, wicked with the help of Shook in that top lane. He's just give him so much confidence in that lane matchup right now. He's just bullying that every chance he gets. Blue buff giving across to Froggen. He hops, skipping a jump it away. In this bottom lane, they've gone a little bit far here. Dance is going to try and cut them off. It is just Tams that's having to back away. Didn't have a great deal of vision in their own jungle right now. But this, this is some very good deep wards from Kaboom because they're setting up for the mid lane push and at the same time they're setting up for a potential dragon because they have these wards behind the dragon right now to spot a line if they want to try and contest it. So I actually like the deep wards they're placing now. They just need to use them. Try and apply some pressure on this mid lane or go for this dragon here. You have the rumble pick with the haunting guys. Definitely a possibility. Good wards coming out from Froggen and the rest of the team. Deep wards coming in from Kaboom into their jungle side on the red. Power spikes really coming out of the side now of Alliance. We see a bit of that Lich Bane being built up here by Froggen, but Wicked, Triforce already finished. Just about 14 minutes in. That's scary, scary stuff. It really was such an early trend before. Oh man, I feel for the top lane left. Seconds out, round four, it could be coming. We see once again Chuck heading in there. It's Tabs is going to have to get out of the way. The cooling note from Minerva and forces him away. Tabs having a little bit of problems down there. You can yeah. see he's falling behind in a farm. Of course, he is in a tougher lane. Minerva being strong on Lucian early on. That pink ward battle is going to be won out as well by Dance protecting it, if not able to get close enough. But the movement all seems to be towards his top lane right now for Alliance as they group. And it is pretty crazy with this bottom lane from Kaboom. I mean, Minerva was actually recruited as the support, while Dance was the AD carry and the shock call at the same time. And then they decided to swap roles because Dance could use... I mean, he had a bit of view on the, of the game. He had, obviously, the ability to make big plays on a champion like Thresh, and then he could shock call from the support side, and then Minerva could be the AD carry. And he has been an AD carry for long, and yet they're actually performing really well. Down this bottom lane 2v2. Pretty much every single game they've played. Nif starting to get his roam on a little bit. Also, pink wards for him so they can start moving them up. Minerva wanting to put down the aggression buster shot immediately from Tabs. He doesn't want to be taking any light bringers, especially that ardent blaze for Minerva to stay in range. He's taking a lot of minion damage right there. That is actually a very good use of ulti from Tabs because mm -hmm. there's not a lot of life steal. It's only the uh -oh. drawn's blade for Minerva here. So get him low. Use your ulti every time it's off cooldown just to poke him down and you should be able to stay in the lane and potentially go for a kill later on. Swing and a miss. Combo shook and Dan's there. Morgan looking to try and get himself rolling as he had to find that kill. Of course, got just that assist earlier on, but keeping up in farm with the Orianas. Not a bad move for Tinones. Doing okay. Wicked sidestep it once again. Not managed to land that leash on towards him. He's going to continue farming, of course, now. With that, Trinity Force will be very confident. Still, neither team showing any signs of looking towards this dragon right now, despite the fact we're in 17 minute mark. Alliance is happy sitting and farming again. Your solo laners are getting free farm, they're getting all the kills they need. You can keep this laying phase going, and it's just all about taps still sitting down his bottom lane at the same time and farming and preventing the go dragon. And it's one thing, whenever you talk to Froggen, he always says, I do not care about my team being flashy, I just want to win games no matter how they do it. Danagorn forced away. They're going to try and turn this back onto the line. as well. Oh, Lep trying to come in. A nice equalizer. Dance missing the hook to keep Shook cooking on that one. They get out quite easily. And it doesn't look like they find too much pressure off of that, but they do draw the teleport up. That might be a little bit of the time they now want to go for the dragon if they don't just kill Lep off of this one. No. <laughs> He's got to know they're still close. Oh, the whole game. They're going for him. 
Oh, they're gonna jump in. He gets kicked backwards. Wicked Tress can slow down. In comes the rest of Kaboom, though. They try and claps around him. They do not get the lantern down in time, and Short gets himself the fourth kill. He is absolutely on a roll on these in. And Lip was actually down the bottom lane here, but then he had to teleport up to the top lane because the fight started. And he was stuck in the lane once again, and Shook and Wicked was just waiting in the bush, killing him. Now they can actually take this tower here. There's a lot of members from Kaboom nearby. They might look to fight. Could indeed look to fight here. Dance to hit this hook. A very nice Howling Gale from Nif. Just pretty much stops everything with a simple Q. The turret goes down 5-0 to zero here. 3,000 gold lead for Alliance as it looks like they could be heading towards their first win in this group stage. All of that attention they drew away has given Tabs oh, yeah. and Frog and Free Farm. They've also got themselves a lot of good vision down in around this dragon area, so we may see the first move. Look at this, though. Tabs and Frog are just waiting off the side. They know that Kaboom are going to get drawn towards this tower. And oh, Lep, oh, Lep, jump the waters, Whoa, go out, it. and is missed, ladies and gentlemen. It does happen. Frog and misses skill shot. You gotta believe in the left that believes in himself. He got out of that one quite clean. Looks like he's gonna try to make plays with the team here. They are down there. Great moves from left because his teleport's down. Everybody's down and ready for the dragon to fish you. And now they're grouped five members here. Doesn't seem like they actually wanna go straight for this dragon. There's a lot of wards around the area from Alliance already. Okay, boom. You can't really go back up to Wicked over this top lane. He's going to kill you one-on-one. -on -one. You have to try and force something as a team. And that hex drinker now being picked up by Wicked as well is going to cause problems. Like you said, nobody can deal with him right now. He's just going to keep on split pushing, keeping all the problems on them. Kaboom maybe going to try and create a play here. They catch Shook out. Nice this is a good goal. The kick on Danagon. He tries to jump away, but he will be taken down. The first kill for Kaboom. Such a nice play here by Dance, interrupting the safeguard from Shook. So he couldn't get away and just managed to pick up the first kill. Again, though, here, Lip walking around this mid lane. Seems like they don't want to go for Dragons because Minerva's actually sitting in this top lane here defending against Wicked. Two-man defense coming in from Tin Owens and Lep in the mid lane. They're going to throw down the fire. And they're going to get that cleared out nicely. Lion's not really looking for too much right now without Shook on the map, who's really been a playmaker this game. Four, one, and one. Definitely a switch up from the Elise play we saw on day one. <laughs> I also have to say, I really love all the support people are giving to Kaboom. I mean, we had yesterday Absolutely. on Twitter where people were with the hashtags as well. I mean, even Ooh. predicted to win the game here. I mean, they have so many fans. I was I was looking at Reddit. People are putting posts up saying, let's all support the boom here. And they are a really likable team. And I like the fact here, they're really trying to give Alliance a fight. And they said themselves they were not very happy with the loss over Cloud9. They felt they could have won that one. And you know what? If you look at the game, maybe just coming out of lane phase, there was possibility where it could have turned around for them. Yeah. Alliance, have to back away from Dragon, not going to go for it here. Shook is there, but the rest of the team not quite on the same page. Yeah, Alliance is waiting to see if they spot Minerva up in the Ooh. top side. They do actually oh, the ward, yeah. so they know he's the top side. Wigger can keep pushing it. He's the only member, member who can actually stay at the tower to defend, but it simply means Alliance can start the Dragon. They have to teleport advantage as well if they want to take it. So many wards paying off here, that one as well. You can see Kaboom pretty much oh, backing all over the map, and it kind of leads to Dragons, the first. And finally, as they go for Dragon, it's going to be Alliance first. They have all the wards around them. They pretty much paid for this Dragon, so they need it back. They're getting the best of both worlds. They've taken the Dragon and put a massive dent in towards that top tower. You can see Minion wave in there, left. Actually, oh, Wookie didn't really do a great deal of damage to it <laughs> after all. Kind of stood looking at it, maybe. We didn't quite see it on the screen. But it does mean that Kaboom now are slipping slowly but surely away in gold. It's only a 4,000 gold differential. We've seen Alliance already give up a 5,000 gold differential earlier on to Najin yeah. White Shield. But Kaboom, they're going to have to step up something here to slow Alliance's slow chokehold. Might go for Frog in here. Stepping up a little bit. Shum the Waters comes out. Dan's quickly stepping out around oh, that one. He's going to come God. up with a kill for himself. Flashes to land the Trickster. Arden Blaze hits. One more shot's going to give Minerva the passive movement speed. He picks up the buffs. But what can they gain off of this? Well, you get assist for your team as well. You get a double buff on your AD carry here. Let's see what Kaboom can actually force. We saw Alliance. They've already been splitting up in this 1-3-1. Tap sitting in the mid lane. Frog and pushing a lane, and of course, Wicked pushing the other side lane, which is what they want to do the entire game long. So Kaboom, ready to respond. Yes, okay. Danagon went down, but you got the assist for your team as well. Should kind of sneak around in towards that top lane. Was spotted out by a ward. Nif also closing in, but we do see Kaboom clo closing the gap here. Nif will take that pink ward down. The hook comes through, does not quite land, and a good Howling Gale stops Kaboom in their tracks. Ping goes down in the mid lane on tabs. 
He tries to push a wave in. They're desperately defending his mid lane turret and he's working well. Seeing the way that they're getting disengaged on these Kaboom must see that they need to sweep a little bit more. They're walking through wards everywhere. Simple disengages from Alliance are making this a little too easy. Still a trinket up there for Lep as he tries to keep himself safe. And the pink wards get cleared out as well. So Kaboom is just getting forced back a little bit more here. Maybe they'll find a fight in Alliance. Uh-oh, Shook's gonna be in. Nice flash there. Danagorn also able to help stave off a little bit more of the engage. Trading flash for flash over in his top lane here. Shook wants to flash Q onto Lep and then try and follow him if he flashed after. Meanwhile though, Minerva and Tinons pushing this mid lane. See the response from Alliance. Good pressure. Shook's gonna find Danagorn in the jungle. They're gonna trade on this one. Shook doesn't fancy it. Danagorn forces him into yeah. the Baron pit. That's the safe cut across. But Froggen has been pulled and drawn into that mid lane. He's just shoved the wave all the way up to that tower right now. And Alliance pulled to defend, but it doesn't seem that Kaboom are gonna go for it. Forces the flash from Wicked there. Good bait from Dans. And Alliance, they know if Kaboom is standing here as a team, they are very, very strong. So if you land the hook onto someone like Wicked who's out of position, Kaboom might actually be able to take him down, respond by taking a tower as well. Rumble is level 12 at the moment, so you have your rank to ulti. Very, very strong power spike for him, and I really hope we're gonna see Kaboom for the next dragon. Try and go down five members and take the fight against the Lions. Don't just give this dragon away. And imagine what that fight would be like if there wasn't so much focus top. That's only the place they put it. If you look at the rest of the map, these lanes are quite even, but Shook was able to get so much pressure up top, it kind of ran Kaboom thin. Now, hopefully getting it back with these objectives. They do have the equalizer. They do have the shockwave. The resets from Danagord can come in but it's all easier said than done. Frogan is back in his mid lane, hasn't quite completed that Zonya's Hourglass, just waiting for his moment to back off, but it does buy yet more time for Wicked to continue his pressure. And his seemingly lane buddy right now, Shook, is alongside him. Don't think they're gonna be able to get this red buff stolen away. We'll back off and again, Wicked popping that ultimate. Equalizer goes down from left there a little bit. Early on that one, tries to slow Wicked in his tracks, and yeah. the rest of Alliance are happy to collapse here. They're gonna find out towards Dance. There's the kick in towards the forest. Will try and lock him up, but he does get away. Tries to turn the death sensors back on him. Close engagement still, but Kaboom are hanging on. Yeah, Lep really needs to save his ulti though for a potential team fight and not right. try and catch Wicked. He also had half the ulti coming actually into the wall here, so it was easy for Wicked to sidestep and get out of it, but the fact that Alliance ward up the red buff and was staying around it should mean for Kaboom, okay, Alliance want to contest this red buff here. We might get a fight in the jungle, which is what you want as a rumble, as an Orianna here. So Lep, he needs to save his ulti. Don't use it to try and catch out someone like Wicked at this point. Have it ready for a potential team fight, and then use it if Alliance is fighting in a choke point in the jungle. Really wanting to help make plays. There's got to be a lot of pressure on him. He's feeling from the laning phase coming out of this one but it was really brought on by Shook. I'm sure the team realizes he's still there and he's definitely still going to make an impact in the game. Gigantic differential in that top lane, really. 234 CS to 133. Lep is very much being camped in a game. Look at this, Shook heading back up to the top lane, absolutely living alongside Wicked in this lane. Does, of course, mean the fact that Shook has been there for so long that Lep is not too far behind in actual <laughs> experience. He's just not getting the CS. He's able to stick close enough to the minions going down, just doesn't get that last hit that he's been looking for. Kaboom themselves, for the last five minutes, have prevented any objectives falling. Yeah, Alliance is playing this very, very slow. They're basically just waiting to outscale with their split pushes here, and of course, Taps and Tristana getting to his late game point. They don't really want to fight in the mid game. We talked about how Kaboom had such a strong mid game comp with the Rumble, you have the Lucian pick, and even Orianna with, with her Fiend starts to become stronger yeah. and stronger. So Alliance didn't want to go for the fights. Let's see what they do now. He's definitely put a target on his head with that Rumble pick. It has such a high win rate, so Alliance was not going to let that go through the game easily. They take down Lep once again at 0-5 and 0. You got a feel for Danagon. He was like looking there, he was like, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. As soon as he messes up that blade search, I'm gonna go for it. As soon as Frog came out, he's like, nope, I'm out, <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> You're all on your own there, Lep. It does mean, of course, that this defensive unit is gonna be tricky. In goes Frog and feeling confident. He's got that Zonny's Hourglass completed. Happily slides through Tinones, thought about closing the gap, but while it's all happening, Alliance just closed out another objective.
and the Dragon goes their way, keeping the gold flowing in their direction. It's been all about this top lane here. You even see Alliance place like the pink ward up on the top side here, just above the Baron, to make sure, okay, we can always walk river, uh, walk past the Baron, up to the top lane. We know we have a pink ward, so there's no wards we can move, and then we can jump onto Lip again and kill him, get objectives elsewhere on the map as well, because so many members from Kaboom is focused on this top lane here. Poor Lip, he's really a... Uh, been in trouble and oh again. man double danish double indeed coming up not even a chum the water is necessary for that one they know they have the control with the wards around them and that means all those ultimates are still ready oh. for use Going a little hard here chum the water is now coming out for dan's the zanya oh. that's gonna be a hit the static shiv burst coming in with a nice shot from tabs they got eyes on the turret and dan Gorn again forced to watch his team go down 28-30, one of the first second tier turrets taken down. And finally, Taps actually joins the action here, just walking up, last hitting, getting his first kill. He's just been farming mid pretty secured. much the entire yeah. game long. Because what's that? It's called kill secure. <laughs> Don't worry, Frogging, I got you covered. I'm going to save you <laughs> with this last cannon shot. So, Tino, Shockwave so, so close to catching off towards him. Wasn't quite there. Not the Shockwave, sorry. Sonic, Sonic Wave. <laughs> Look, well, the shock they're both under the free problem. And speaking of shock waves, we haven't seen one for quite a while. Honestly, Taps just free hitting on the turret and takes it down. Kaboom simply can't really step up here. Minerva was in his own jungle, actually like, farming the wolf camp, and he's looking towards his bottom lane because he's been pushed up already. So he wasn't there for the oh, wave there. Don't go for it, Minerva. Don't oh, go for it. Frog's careful. off the side. In comes Niff, tries to keep him around there. The dead the side will land, but it's Frog and he catches. He's got himself a rabbit on death cap. Sorry, he's going to build up towards him. Minerva going to get caught down. Frog and taking low. The Zonius is not quite off cooldown yet. He will he get picked up. Tino's dropped. They're going to keep on rushing. Dan's very low on this one. Dan Gorn had to jump out, so he's not going to be able to reset back in off of anything because there's no kills coming. And even with Frog and throwing the fish out of the boat on that, they were were able to take the fight to Tin Owns and Dan. And Lip oh, once man. again. Oh no. No Pierce in the heavens this time. Well, we say it so many times when Alliance, this is what they want to do, this is how they work in Europe. They just get to that one power point and they push, push, yeah, push. Absolutely. And suddenly, Kaboom find themselves down two outer turrets. And this is where it all started. The hook on Froggen. Not really the mid laner he wanted. He's a slippery well, still, one. They get some damage on him. Then Minerva actually dancing around here, dodging the fish as well from Froggen. But the rest of Alliance is able to join in. Let's see what Froggen is actually doing here. Just dancing around. He has minions. Don't have to care about the tower at all. You can just safely actually walk out here and they're feeling him a little bit as well. And the rest of Alliance can clean up the fight. And they're not done yet, of course, killing Lip. So Alliance now clearing out all the ward coverage in and around that Baron. I'm not sure that's their target. It may well just be a little bit of bait to draw them in. Good call in from Minerva once again, finding his target, finding the back of Froggen. A little bit of bait as well, it seems, by the sounds of it. Trying to taunt him out, but Kaboom, they dare not go in that jungle right now. They have pink wards on the outskirts, but Alliance have it completely littered right now. But you can see how teams actually respect Kaboom a lot here in the way they play. They don't just like go over aggressive 24-7 in the game and want to finish it in 20 minutes. They are actually respecting yeah. the power spikes of Kaboom. They're, they're respecting the 5 versus 5 power they do have. So Alliance has just been taking it pretty slow, making sure they can get this win here and don't have to risk Kaboom coming back in the game. Well, someone it is coming. He's down to go. I'm going to try and sneak around the side. Can he get close enough to try and jump in? No. Instead, forced away. Shook takes down the Baron. And Alliance secure yet another objective. They're now 11,000 gold ahead in this matchup and looking very strong for their first victory. But how much do they really take from it? That's the question. This was a, a win that's expected of this team. It's and the other wins they need. And at the halfway mark being one and two, not the position I think they'd be feeling they'd be in. Let's not count them out just yet, but it is looking very strong for Lions here. Something that we've been seeing from teams as well, NA and EU, because all the other teams are pretty much putting their foot down when they have this big lead, is will they decide to close it out or do they go slow? Give other teams a, a point to find weakness. Been seeing them pushing too hard, they've been happy to stay on the outside. Like you're saying, Deficio, they're definitely respecting that power, but they got to find a way around it to start ending these games as well. Well, the way around it is what they're doing now, once again. Yeah. Morgan and Wicked in each side lane, push it up here, taps in this mid lane. Level 16 has a long range of Tristan already and just push down every single time. Maybe even go for a dive around. Frogan was showing himself. 
For now, they just take the tower. So once again, I want to go for any aggressive tower dives. You've got to be careful nobody gets drawn too deep against Wicked. He's looking to pounce right now. Splitting off all three lanes being pushed up by Alliance. It's going to draw Kaboom away from one of these inhibitors. The question is, which one will it be? Danagorn just about avoiding the Sonic Wave and Alliance. They find themselves the top turret. The bottom turret's also being pushed. Wicked's getting the damage down on that one, and Kaboom are being pulled from pillar to post. They have minions on every lane on the front step right now. Like you said, stretched very thin. 33 minutes into the game, Alliance looking to put the nail in the coffin here. Possibly Aurelia on the bottom side, and it's going to be actually Tabs taking the top side to himself. Still just pushing every single lane. Might go for Minerva here. Oh, jump the oh, water no. pulled. Good <laughs> landing, though. Follows on Minerva, doesn't matter. That's the inhibitor turret going down. The top lane is also going to drop, and suddenly Alliance find themselves in an exposed Kaboom base. This is exactly what they need. Just get down the first few towers, go towards the inhibitors here, open up the base. Wicked, it's not done down this bottom lane. Not nope. at all. Too strong to be done right now. 296 to 164 in that lane with a constant pressure towards left. Minerva throwing out the culling to make sure Tabs doesn't get too close to drop that. Uh -oh. Inhibitor Wicked going 1v1 with 10 owns there. Shook was on the backside, but was really hitting the inhibitor. These guys that have multiple things on their plate and they're able really to act on every one of them. Now to the mid lane as the top inhibitor has been taking down. Alliance is turning Kaboom's base into shambles. Wicked could get caught out a little bit here. Looks like the box goes down for a disengage. Nobody falls through. First time flash being used by Wicked there, but again, all towers now down. The inhibitor is gonna drop. Tabs forced away from this one. Kaboom desperately trying to find a target. Is it Wicked? Shockwave pulls him in. Have they got enough? The Monsoon lands. Danagorn is gonna get focused. He gets burnt on down. Shook goes deep. Punts and left straight back in towards Alliance. They give themselves a second. Tabs gets himself the double. Keeps on pushing through and Kaboom are forced away. It is finally one kill. Shook will drop, but all inhibitors are now down and Alliance have themselves a strong chance to win. They can just go back now here, buy some items, wait for your super minions to also stay around with your Baron Buff. I mean, you have a lot of minions spawning into the base here. No super right. minions just yet, which is what they want. Really make the last push. Still have taps. You can take down these towers in just a few seconds. You have Lich Bane and Frogan as well. TP from Wicked. Alliance, don't care about super minions. This looks like it could be the final push here coming in. Tabs. We were saying earlier on the on the analyst desks, liking to see these 80 carries, not afraid to step up and hit these turrets while the turrets are hitting back. And we saw Tabs face checking a little bit there. He gets out safely. 402 for him on this game, doing very well for the team, keeping himself safe on that split push as well. Dragons live, but it's all about what's in front of their eyes right now. Alliance is still staying to keep this game in their favor. Well, double super minions pushing in. You gotta yeah. wonder what's holding Alliance back. I know the Baron buffs <laughs> worn off, but come on, guys. You have a gigantic lead. All three inhibitors down. It's just time you find a pick here, and that is what they're looking. Double super minions coming in the top. Double super minions coming in the bottom, and rotating through in the mid lane as well. Alliance drawing on through, trying to find that one simple time to push. They're so careful of that sonic wave landing. Shockwave landing of Tino. <laughs> I'll get it the right way around eventually. <laughs> this time around, Frogan is pushing in. Danagon's going to be the focus. Wicked jumps on towards him. They force him back onto the fountain right now. They put the damage down on the Nexus turret. Alliance will finally take their first victory at World Championships. It's been a long time coming, that's for sure. And they still took the time to do it here. Oh. Doesn't look like it's going to be an easy road, though, with this being the first win the team created to win Worlds, a super team from Froggen. Struggling a little bit, but that win definitely going to bolster the spirits somewhat. Yeah, and for Kaboom here, I mean, we kind of saw the same tactic. Dance and Minerva down this bottom lane, they can handle themselves in a 2v2. Did a very good job, got the tower as well. Minerva didn't even die in the game here. And then Leb is always the focus for the enemy team. You want to kill him as many times as possible in the top lane here. Yesterday, Danagon was sitting in the bush waiting for the entire game long. Today, he decided to farm a bit more, and suddenly Shook is there to just kill Lev. I'm not sure if tomorrow if he's going back to the wait game and just hope to come again early on. I mean, it is so hard because there's so much focus on Lev up in this top lane. Yeah, I kind of feel sorry for him, honestly. 0 8 1 at the end there was constantly yes. out. Wicked and Shook working very well as a combo, but that's a good sign yeah. for Alliance fans, the fact that they did work out so well. But. Let's not get carried away. Because Shook was on Lee Sin, Wicked was on Aurelia, both on 
They're very favorite champions. Some good picks there. Also, got to consider that win weight on Rumble. They didn't want that to happen again for the game. They actually weren't even able to use a Rumble all in conjunction with an Ori alt around Dragon. Where you want it, why you pick them, that mid game. They were able to just kind of shut that strategy yeah. right down. And that was kind of why the game was pretty slow because 